What's good, everybody? You know who I am, the Supreme Soup, and I am here to do a reaction slash review. Well, technically, this is just going to be a review of Nas King's Disease 2, which just dropped a week ago. I finally got to it after a whole week, but I want to talk a little bit about this, talk about how, you know, it landed, where it landed on my spectrum of expectations for this, being that you know, I thought the previous album, King's Disease 1, was alright. This one actually kind of seemed a little bit better to me. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It was entertaining, for the most part. I'm going to start off talking from the intro, Pressure. This personally wasn't my favorite track. I felt like it was a little bit slow, which, of course, intros can be like that. It's kind of just like a warm-up, and, you know, the beat felt a little bit... Uh, uh, what's the word? Somber? Not somber, but a little slow starting off. Personally, not my favorite. That's what I felt about that. Death Row, on the other hand. Death Row East, sorry. The beat was fire. Uh, I love the storytelling, and it's just interesting to hear Nas talk about something that happened, I don't know, 20, 25 years ago, and kind of have like a new perspective, new insight to the Death Row East Coast, West Coast beef. Uh, you know, and Nas being a part of that, of course. You know, Nas was kind of uh, not the best of friends with Tupac. And so it just it just seemed like it'd be interesting to hear his full side of the story. Because I don't think I, I, don't, I haven't heard him speak on this beef uh, in, in such detail, especially not in a song. So Death Row East, uh, one of my favorite songs, 40 Side. I like 40 Side, it had more of a modern vibe to it, and it seemed like Nas was kind of trying to assimilate with newer sounds, especially with him using the word blicky. You ain't hear dudes saying blicky, at least not in the context of guns, the drums, the flow that he had, and the sample that he had uh, playing throughout the song as well. Next will be EPMD. I felt like this was probably the hardest track on the album. I enjoyed it the most. Memorable lines in this song, of course. I said hip hop is dead, but it faked his death like Machiavelli. The way the intro was, the way that it kind of had like a slow build up and then it came with the, with the like heavy dun, 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 with EPMD coming back and forth, going off each other like that. I felt like that was kind of dope. And then on top of that, we had Eminem come in toward the end of the song, which was like the way he came in just out of nowhere. He didn't have no hook, no real separation from Nas's verse. And then he just started going off. I felt like that was entertaining, especially when the beat switches up. I thought that was dope as well. This was just a nice little tribute to EPMD. It has some, just some hard moments in it. You know the vibes or YKTV. Nas compares himself to the Jordan logo of rap. Maybe accurate. Nas is one of the most influential artists of all time. So to call himself the Jordan logo of rap, I don't know. That's up to you to decide whether that's an overstatement or not. Nobody has some lo-fi vibes. It made me think like Nas isn't the best hook writer but still there's a lot of substance in this in this song it talks about social decline in relation to social media how it's kind of just made us worse at communicating you can call someone nowadays and they'll never pick up because you got caller id even though people have their phones in their pockets it's that much harder to reach them back in the day when people just had house phones you would call them and they almost always pick up the phone if they were home and it'd just be easier to contact people because it's like, surprise, bitch, it's me. Lauren Hill has a feature on Nobody as well. Really insightful verse. She kind of just aired out her struggles over people's expectations of her. She had a line that said, I'm saving souls and y'all complain about my lateness. Like, that's, that's a fact. Like, a lot of people kind of criticize her for inconsistencies when it comes to music or her performance at the end of the day she's doing a lot she's busy she's active she's creative and sometimes people expectations of her kind of just get in her head and she's kind of airing that out brunch on sundays <laughs> again i'm just thinking like nas really isn't that great at hooks and i felt that way on this song but blast has a feature on this and i wasn't expecting him to sing being that I don't think he sung when I first heard him in the, in the ciphers. So those violins at the end, though, those should have been extended. 
that's how I feel. The violins, extend those out maybe like another minute or two and you have yourself a great song just for a little solo effect. I don't feel like every song had the greatest impact on how I felt. Nas is good, which was kind of like an outro final song on the album. He was kind of flexing his ancient knowledge, which he does He does pretty well. He kind of just compares it to now, where he's in his hood, he's respected, he's well respected, he's a king amongst his hood. He's made a significant impact, and I feel like this album kind of just drives it home, and I think it's a pretty solid album. And th those are my thoughts about it. I feel like it could have been better. I feel like it could have been more classic. That's my thoughts. Subscribe. Uh, I'm running low on time. That's why I'm like trying to wrap it up. But I appreciate everyone watching this. You already know. Check out uh, these videos over here. Check out my Patreon where I have the full length reaction on there. And uh, thank you all for watching. Peace.